Hi, we're Jack, Gabby and this is Tilly and for the last three years we have lived on this narrow boat and today we want to show you around. called Flora. So this is our main entrance into the boat and you come straight into our living space but this here is one of my favourite places to sit especially this time of the year when it's cold outside because I am right next to our wood burner. So she is the absolute heart of the boat in the winter so much so it makes me look forward to the winter months when we can have her on because it is so atmospheric being able to sit and listen to the fire crackling and see the flames through the glass. It's also where we cook in the winter so we put jacket potatoes wrapped in foil inside the fire. We probably have that too many times I think we're probably having about two times a week at the minute but it gives like a lovely lovely smoky flavour. And then on top of the wood burner, we can also fit a kettle and stews and things like that. So it's, it's our version of a slow cooker as well. We actually installed the wood burner ourselves, which was about six months into owning the boat. And it was a terrifying job. I think probably the scariest job we've had to do on this boat. The worst part is having to drill a hole in the roof and just hope that you've done it in the right place. <laughs> And then over here is our cupboard. So when you live in a small space, storage is key. And this one has become a bit of a dumping ground. So we keep everything from our shoes to Tilly's coats. She has way too many for a dog um, and all of our Mori equipment. And then we've got one of our sockets up here. So that's our 240 volt socket. So we've got 12 volt and 240 throughout the boat. Gabby and I both work from home, so it's really important to have little spots around the boat where we can sit with our laptop and get our jobs done. This is the area which I love doing that the most. It's our stand-up desk. You're working right in front of a window, which let's be honest, when you're working, you spend a fair bit of time just daydreaming, don't you? When the boat's flipped around the other way, this window faces out onto the canal, which is just gorgeous because you get to watch the swans, the moorhens, the kingfishers flitting on by. When it's this way around, I get to wave hello to all the passers-by on the towpath. stand-up desk is on top of our chest. Now we've got the chest originally as a place to store our logs and our winter fuel. What it's become is more of just one of those places we bung all those things that are really useful but we don't use that often. So things like Gabby's sewing machine which she tells me she uses all the time despite the fact it's only come out once in like the last three years but you know we get a story in the chest. of our living space, our sofa, which is where you will always find Tilly the Schnauzer, unless she's in bed. Um, it's a maze.com Haru sofa we picked up second hand. Um, it's quite small but perfect for an airboat and then opens out as a double sofa bed which is perfect for where our guests stay because we've only got one bedroom on board. Um, and then from here you can see all of our books, not all of them, we have way too many books for small space living, mainly Jack's cookbooks. Don't make it out as though I'm cluttering up the whole place, you've got some poetry books. I have a lot of books as well, we have too many books for small space living. You can't have too many books. And then from this sofa you can see one of the best bits about the boat which is our hatch. So it's bigger than most other narrow boats and it just is the perfect place to stand in the morning and look at the nature. So this is our hatch where we spend so much time every day. It's kind of like a gateway into the outside world. We've got swans that live on this stretch of canal. They literally knock with their beaks and then we feed them oats through here. Then when boaters go past, you've got to say hello. It's kind of an obligatory part of being a boater. It's just a gorgeous place to spend time and just watch what's going on outside. Before you know it, an hour's passed and you've, you've done nothing but watch the world go by. This is the kitchen. Um, it's the second half of our living space because we kept everything really open plan in the boat. 
and it's probably where we put the majority of our effort in when we first got it. We completely remodeled this space. So we kept most of the main infrastructure there. These cabinets and stuff are all there, um, but we completely changed all of this part. Gabby tiled the walls and we put new worktops on here as well. This is reclaimed parquet flooring, which I just absolutely love. Like it was a massive job to do, but I love how they look. I just think the richness of the wood is absolutely gorgeous. It's probably where I spend the majority of my time. I really love cooking and it's a really good space. Our oven, actually really good. It runs on gas. We've got four hobs on the top, two kettles, normally because we keep one of them on the wood burner. Um, it's got a grill, which is a little temperamental. It just doesn't like to light. Once it's going, it's all right. You make toast pretty decently, but getting it going can be a bit of a pain. Um, and our main actual like oven bit in there, again, that all runs on gas. Um, and it's pretty temperamental as well. Like there's definitely like, hot spots in that oven and usually if you're doing like a cake and things like that, like one part of it will cook, the other part will still be raw. It just takes a lot of getting to know. The thing with this space is it's really good for storage. So we've got lots of cupboards. This is where we keep most of our food and like pantry sort of bits and pieces. So we've got stuff like chickpeas, um, more storage over on this side for like pots and pans or that kind of thing. I would show you in this cupboard, but I'll be honest, I've kind of taken it over. It's got all of my tools in it from when I was doing the renovation on the boat. So it's really, yeah, that's as much as that as you're gonna see. Whilst I'm down here, I might as well show you the fridge as well. We've got a pretty decent sized fridge. We've also got a good sized freezer compartment at the top as well. It's winter at the moment, so we don't need to have this running. Literally, if you need to keep stuff cold, we just put them out on the front deck or the stern because it's so chilly outside. We don't really need to worry about keeping things cold. But in the summer, um, this is running almost 24 seven and the solar panels keep that running really efficiently. So once you've been in the kitchen, you come down this very narrow corridor and you get to our bathroom in here, which is quite a tight squeeze. So I will take you in there with me. So it's actually one of our last um, bits of the renovation that we did. And the last part was painting it this peach color, which I'm actually quite happy with, I think. Um, but yeah, we thought it was gonna be quite an easy job and it was very fiddly. It included taking out a wall, taking out the bath, refitting it. Um, so yeah, we've got this half size bath. We don't bath in it very often. We more just get to stand in the warm water whilst we're showering, um, which is lovely. And it's got a diddly looking shower head, which is really powerful. So we have a good shower on board. Um, then a boater's favorite question, what kind of toilet do you have? We have a compost. So we actually built that ourselves and it works really well. Um, but yeah, let us know, would you get on well with a compost toilet? I think it's something that van lifers can have as well quite easily, um, but it takes a bit of getting used to. Then above the loo, we have these wire shelving, uh, which is where we put all of the things that we need kind of daily access to. We also put the sink in ourselves. Um, the cabinet was here, but we kind of retopped it, put a new sink and tap in. And that's it, so it's quite a small space, um, but it does everything you could need from a bathroom with a little hook on, the, hook on the back of the door as well for our towel and clothes when you're showering. And then back out into the corridor to the end is our bedroom. So let's go and see what's down there. I think Tilly thinks it's Christmas. We normally don't let out on the bed during the day, just like at night time, but it's a special day, we're filming the tour. Um, welcome to the bedroom. So this is probably the most functional space really on the boat. We haven't done a huge amount to it. It hasn't had much of a glow up. So we've got a, a standard double bed. Small double. Small double bed and um, it works. It's probably a little bit on the small side for us if we're completely honest. Like one of us has to sleep pinned up against that wall, which is me, whilst Gabby gets this lovely open side here. We've got a good amount of storage in this room as well. Um, so underneath the bed, you've got these two big drawers which open out um, and they're really deep. So they're really good for putting like things like winter clothes and that sort of stuff in there, depending on what season you're in. Um, we've also got these cupboards at the back. These should be used as wardrobes, but I am currently storing all of my tools in them from the renovation. So instead, we are storing our clothes in these suitcases down here, which I know doesn't look great, but this is a functional room. These are all full, so 
We've kind of gone for some vintage suitcases instead, which, you know, they kind of look all right, don't they? Um, you've probably noticed this wire as well coming down from the outside. So this is how we get internet on the boat. Um, where our mooring is, we haven't got any phone signal. So normally we'd just use 4G, but here we're in a bit of a dip in a bit of a valley. So you get absolutely zero phone reception at all. So the only way we can get it is by having an aerial on the end of like um, a window cleaner's pole. This connects to it and then comes to our router, which is here. So that's how we get internet. Um, behind me is the control panel. So this is where we can control all the electrical circuits in the boat. We can turn the fridge off. We can turn like, the cabin lights off. Also a good place to like monitor how much charge is in the batteries. So that's the ledger batteries and that's the starter battery because we're off grid. So we have to keep an eye on how much storage, how much battery we have left, how much the solar panels have managed to generate all of that kind of thing. Um, in this cupboard down here, we have our inverter. So we have a Victron inverter, which is what powers our 240 volt circuits that go around the boat. I think that's probably all it is to show you in here. So shall we head outside and have a look at the back deck? This is our back deck which is a really, really lovely part of the boat, especially in the summer, because we can fit a table and chairs out here. So it's a great space to sit and eat tea and again, just watch the world go by. We've got a cruiser stern on Flora, which is the name for this shape stern. It means that our engine is directly below us. So underneath these two panels is where our engine bay is. It's also where our ledger batteries are. So they're underneath this bit pretty much. What I'm sitting on is our gas locker. So we have two gas lockers, both sides. Flora is a former higher boat, so we've got room for lots of gas canisters. I think we can fit four 13 kilo kilogram bottles. This is the engine control panel, so where your ignition is, engine temperature, if you're into that. Um, and you've got your tunnel light control, your horn, all of those bits and pieces are here. And then back here, we have the tiller. So this is how you steer the boat. It's a little bit confusing when you cruise a narrow boat because which way you point the tiller, the boat moves in the opposite direction. So if I wanted to move to the left, then I'd have to bring the tiller to the right. If I wanted to move to the right, then I'd have to do it the opposite way. It's a little bit confusing. Once you get your head around it, then it becomes second nature. This is the throttle. Um, so that's how we go forwards and backwards and how we control the speed. But that's pretty much it really for the back deck. It is a really lovely part of the boat to spend a bit of time. There is one more space left to show you. And that is up here, which is obviously at the roof of our narrow boat. This is a lovely place to spend time, especially in the summer and watch the world go by and you can see the whole canal and all of the boats around us. It's also very practical, so it's a lot of extra storage um, and it's where our solar panels are. So the solar panels which go directly into the batteries below, our Wi-Fi aerial, which Jack mentioned um, in the bedroom. And then at the far end is our roof garden. So if you have followed us on Instagram for a while, you have seen that when it's fully abundant. Um, so we have wellies, which we have turned into our strawberry planters and an old football we found floating down the canal, which is our chili planter. So we're a few months off really when we can start seeing that coming back to life. I cannot wait. But that is the end of the tour. So thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed this video, please do like and subscribe because it really does help our channel grow. And if you think you could do this lifestyle, living on an narrow boat, living on the water, please let us know in the comments. But thank you so much for watching and we will see you next week for another video.